Live on Zingo TV, the Barn Burner Network, which you can download on the Zingo TV or Barn Burner Network apps. We are also on their Facebook, Twitter, and other streaming devices. And there is an audio version of this on the uh, Barn Burner Network audio download, which you could look up online. So today is my guest. And by the way, you can follow me at Devin Hannibal online, D-E-V-O-N-H-A-N-N-I-B-A-L on Twitter. We're on Instagram and Twitter also at The Hannibal TV and Facebook at The Hannibal TV where we post multiple videos every day. We just did a long interview with Demolition Smash, Barry Darso yesterday. Tomorrow we have a live interview coming up with Magnum TA. Tons of great content and one man that appears fairly often on our channel. He's a current pro wrestler. He's an author. He's a former MMA fighter, former amateur wrestler, stand-up comic, manager of MMA fighters, manager of wrestlers, the king of Connecticut himself, Matthew Granahan, is joining us today, all the way from, I believe, South Carolina, as he's going to come on here any second now and he's made a lot of videos on the Hannibal TV he's quite a ladies man he's an impressive athlete he's a good amateur wrestler so while we're waiting for him to come on maybe they lost him for a second the wrestling news of the week I guess uh not much raw hit its all-time ratings low this week 0 0.41 the worst uh, rating it's ever hit. AEW also went from its highest rating in over a year, a 0 0.45, to only a 0 0.32, which is a huge drop considering they had Kenny Omega in the main event and also Sting on the card. So that was only Sting's third appearance back and his newness is already wearing off. And by the way, I have my dog Piper joining me today. Maybe I'll interview her if they can hook up uh, Matthew Granahan. How are you doing tonight, Piper? She is often appears on my The Hannibal TV YouTube channel as well. But yeah, ratings are low. Impact did a 0 0.04 with Kenny Omega appearing as well. So overall... Television wrestling is not very popular these days. I did appear um, on uh, another uh, company uh, last week, which is why I didn't appear on this channel. I was backstage doing interviews at the SWE Fury Texas event just outside of Dallas that featured one AEW star Lance Hoyt as well as Teddy Long, Kevin Sullivan, Great North Wrestling Star, The Blood Hunter, many others, as well as a whole bunch of fantastic ladies wrestlers. They might have one of the best women's divisions in the United States, if not the best, for a, for a non-television company. Actually, three of their lady wrestlers ended up having uh, AEW tryouts AEW took a look at them on Wednesday before Dynamite in Jacksonville I don't know if they had actual matches but they did post pictures of themselves in the ring in their wrestling knee pads and, and gear as if they were working out and they were also used in the crowd at the uh at the can Dynamite. you hear me yes I can hear you oh here he is oh, here's okay. Matthew well, Granahan well, himself He's looking like Art Davis. Hey, good evening. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was working. You were you were stalled yeah, for I a second. Art Davis style tonight. Yeah. I never I never cover up the hair, but I got the Art Davis style tonight. Looking good. Where are you tonight? I'm out in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I'm actually out towards uh, Johns Island. I just got a. 
well, I'm, I'm buying a new boat out here tomorrow. I had to go over like all the paperwork and stuff. They kept great records on it. And um, out here on the coast, this is like about 30 minutes from Charleston. It's uh, going towards Savannah, but it's um, I'm right on the near the bridge that goes to, to St. John's Island. And the boat is out there at the Harbor, um, Harbor Island Yacht Club out there, St. John's. A nice, nice spot, real nice spot here in South Carolina. But it's, it's unseasonably cold out here tonight. Uh, it's going to get down to the low 40s tonight, which is which is rare. And uh, my blood's thinned a lot since moving from Connecticut so many years ago. Yeah, it's brutal here. It's minus 10 Celsius where I am tonight. Uh, just horrible. I had to train outside earlier today. And I'm making the best of it, but I'd rather be there where there's usually lots of attractive females in uh, South Carolina, too, in the many pictures I see you post on social yeah, media. Man. Yeah, I, I got a I just left one. You know, my the girl I see is uh, the, from Venezuela. They live in the middle part of the state, but they're so big into family around Christmas time. And it feels like half of Venezuela is over there at the house now she's got uh her two sisters there and they both have kids she doesn't have any kids but they both have kids her aunt is there um with her kids so i left to go do this this transaction for a couple days and normally when i come out here to the coast it's beautiful and i'd be outside like i was with holly last time um outside at a beach bar but it is it's brutal tonight it, it it's windy extremely windy and it feels like it's like 30 degrees uh it's i think it's like like 40 or 41 degrees but not used to that here in uh south kakalaki well i have done an interview with you and your director friend on my the hannibal tv youtube channel you appeared on here on the very first show, giving your opinion on uh, the Anderson Silva situation, which it seems like he's going to get a fight again somewhere else. From what I understand, yeah. there's nothing official, but you've dabbled in wrestling and MMA. You've been an author. You want to just tell people a little bit about your background that, that a lot of you're a great heel too, by the way, your pro Rick Bassman has taken your place as the most hated person on the Hannibal TV right now, but yeah. uh, you're probably number two. <laughs> you know, I kind of did a little baby face turn on the Hannibal TV lately. When I read some of the comments started out with the um, call out of the rat, um, dead and the rat. And then when I did that call out, uh, the comments were hilarious and several other commentaries that I always enjoy reading the comments because I love being a heel. But I kind of made a little little baby face turn when I did the, uh, the Jim Cornette commentary because the comments were like, we're all positive there because I think people are real sick of the, this political correctness that's going on here in America and uh, that, that recalculousness with Cornette. But um, now, what is what is? Uh, well, what I was on Cornette's side on that. Just so you know, that was about him being um, fired from NWA. Just for the fans out there, I really don't like him for other no. reasons. But I was on his side for that, which is why we posted that. Um, just if case, in case anyone was wondering what he was talking about, it was yeah, about Jim, Jim Cornette. You know, he's kind of it nasty to everybody but the thing with the thing with Cornette is I I met him um, in uh, Charlotte uh, years ago when I was working the fan fest I had a table with uh, Phil Broni the New York badass and he was next to our table and he was like he, he was a, the only one that wasn't sitting down the whole time he was animated and uh, selling his merch. And we were, I mean, we gave every fan that bought something a custom promo and I was all in everybody's face. So we were like the old carnies, like calling people in, like they used to call people in to the tents uh, to wrestle and box. We were calling people in and uh, 
Cornette and I um, uh, bonded a little bit because one of my old uh, coaches and mentors, the late Billy Wicks, he knew from Memphis. And uh, I had done a book with Eric Paulson that was a history book on uh, on grappling and MMA and pro wrestling, old school catch wrestling. And Billy Wicks wrote one of the forewords along with Gene LaBelle. And uh, he really loved Billy Wicks. And he just likes shooters. He let, I think because he's not one himself. He's not like a real manly man, Jim Cornette. So with me and Baroni. Oh, apparently think, he likes to share his girlfriend around or his wife. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard. And I've seen her. So thankfully he didn't offer her up to me. Now, New York, I, I've got some standards uh, in New York, uh, you've, you've had uh, you've been with Sonny, and there's been some other wrestling ladies that yeah. you've been associated with over the years. Yeah, you know, I did a, I did a Sunny video on your channel as well because people have they haven't seen the commentaries. Just like if they type King of Connecticut Hannibal TV, they could check out the commentaries. And I did one about Sunny, and, and I'll just give the Reader's Digest version is that I I don't have anything against Sunny. Uh, you know, nothing negative against her. I knew her way back when I was pro wrestling in the Indies in Connecticut before I moved down south. And I told the story about her um, coming over to my house when we did a show. And I'll, and I'll you know, I, I want to, I don't want to be too saucy. I know the show was PG, but they can listen to it. And I, the point I wanted to make, though, was she wasn't with Chris Candido. He was on that show. They weren't together. I actually had a couple of drinks with, with Candido after and was talking to Sonny about her having been at the house. So, um, you know, and you can hear the stories of, of me recounting that experience. So I think, you know, I, I always, I always just, you know, ignore everybody, let them do their thing. But the fans today, man, they are vicious, vicious. When you read some of those comments about Sonny. Oh God. What the, I don't know if you saw the Charlie Haas video that I did, but the comments that people are making on that when, oh my God, he's just been off TV 10 years. He's amateur wrestling now. He obviously dropped weight. You don't want to carry around that kind of muscle that he had when in WWE oh. if you're not on TV anymore. They don't know. The fans don't know. And, and the thing is, most of these fans are commenting – They've never done anything, so they don't know what they're talking about. And they make all these allegations about people. And it's like they don't know how to mind their own business. And the, the thing is with, with Charlie Haas, I saw that um, that video. And I was just talking to um, Jeff Lewis Neal, who you know you had him on. He's Neil Koloff now because yeah. um, he wants me to do ref. And I'm referee, doing the referee. And now when I'm out here on the coast for uh, – for the high school mats, the, the high school meets rather. And um, I was telling him the same thing. We were talking about just unrelated. When I coached wrestling after college, when I went back and coached for Norwalk High from my old high school, I freaking shed weight like crazy. And then when I went back and I coached, I helped Jason Valick with the uh, Newberry College summer camp. Dude, I, I was weighing 250 when I was started that you know, coaching for that camp and just being on the mat with those younger guys. I mean, I, by the end of the summer, I was down to 220, you know, so, and, and I wasn't trying to cut weight. It wasn't like I was actively trying to cut weight just from the water weight that you lose wrestling. So most of these people don't know anything about real wrestling, about working, about anything. Most of them, they just, they love, they love to hate on people and they're, they're nasty. I mean, it's just, we live in a really crazy world today. People are, people are really vicious and nasty. <laughs> that is for sure. Now there's also a popular video. I think Sonny might be one of your more popular ones on my channel, but there's one of you and uh, one of your lovely ladies friends taking on UFC hall of famer, Stefan Bonner. And another one of these uh, gorgeous females in an intergender match. Could you tell us a little bit about that match and maybe why people should look it up? Yeah, man, that was a lot of fun. I came up with that in talking to Bonner. 
about we both have the same philosophy about why pro wrestling these days is not enjoyable and it's just like we talked about before it's because it's become so pc so we wanted to do uh something that was attitude era style and we did it with a guy named Mike Karamiko, who has a, a fight promotion that we had broadcasted for that I brought Bonner along. Um, kind of interesting because I'm, I'm flipping through the channels um, last night and they re-aired um, the show that Bonner and I called at the Spartanburg Marriott two years ago. And, and man, I mean, I'm going to give you that to put up on Hannibal TV, man, because I didn't realize i have that on a zip that i can get of copies of to you i didn't realize how funny it was it was hilarious and real politically incorrect of just our our commentary during that show so we have Biner and i both have the same mindset about being entertaining and to and, and your fans if they don't know bonner they they probably know bonner with against forrest griffin but they might not know him in that way they should watch when Bonner came into Bellator and I was uh, managing Bonner and I was also a uh, prime marketing consultant there Bellator right at the end um, when before Sack Coker came in and took over for, for Bjorn Rebney. And I worked was with two other guys doing the marketing and our whole idea was the pro wrestling. It was basically old school pro wrestling. And the whole idea was to be entertaining and to take guys, from UFC, because this was when they first went on to Spike, the Spike Network, to take guys from UFC that were names and bring them into Bellator, you know, put them at the top of the card. So this was the Tito Ortiz, Stefan Bonner um, fight that we got signed. And the, the interesting thing with that fight is the only time that Bellator's ever beaten UFC head to head in the ratings. Um, they had a show on Spike that night, which was main evented by Bonner against Ortiz and UFC had a show on, on Fox sports and we blew them away in the ratings. Never been done since, but if they go back and they watch the promo that set that fight up in the cage with Bonner and Ortiz. And I think I'm sure you've probably seen it. It's, it is awesome. It's better than anything that the pro wrestling league is doing today and it's and and bonner's just a natural he's a, he's he's a natural entertainer he's a natural heel and um the what you're referring to with that legends and vixens we teamed up with uh, mike caramico at millionairefightclub.com and we also teamed up with a um an organization uh that's run by uh, summer steel who is a gorgeous uh, model. Oh, yes, of course. I interviewed her now that you remind me. Yeah, yes, yeah, Summer mm -hmm. Steel. And they um, they have the gorgeous uh, or the beautiful ladies of oil wrestling uh, below. And we had the tag team match, which was me teaming up with uh, Gina Carucci, the Strong Island Lolita, against Summer Steel and Stefan Bonner. And we did a really old school vignette to set that up which I know we shared with you on your Instagram was extremely popular. And um, the yes, match. I think that still holds the record today on our, the Hannibal TV Instagram. I think yeah. what last I checked, it had like 50,000 hits. I don't know what it's at now, but that was pretty awesome. impressive. I mean, and, and that's my, that's what I think pro wrestling needs to be. I think he, I think it needs to, I think they need to pr protect the business in the sense that they haven't done in years um, and it needs to be fun and entertaining. And when I say protect the business, I'm talking about if you go back to when Muhammad Ali was coming into pro wrestling, a lot of people don't realize uh, Gorilla Monsoon wrestled for a school that we wrestled against in college called Ithaca. Uh, up in up, it's a good college up in upstate New York. I don't think they have a wrestling. Didn't they go there on road trip. The Tom Green movie. Didn't they go to the? They all go to Ithaca. Yeah, yeah, Ithaca, <laughs> New York, and and yeah. good old Gorilla Gorilla Monsoon um, had um, wrestled for Ithaca, and that was back before there was a weight limit for heavyweights, and he was runner up, um, second in the country as a heavyweight. 
and he was and he scooped up Muhammad Ali when they were in the ring, spun him around an airplane spin and just dumped him. And that's you contrast that to today when they have some of these sitcom celebrities that'll go in the ring and, and toss oh, the Miz right. around. I mean, they, they've lost all credibility. Pro wrestlers are supposed to be tough. They're supposed to be thought of as being tough. You know, the old school way that I was taught from Billy Wicks is you protect the business when you're out at a bar. You, you know, you're out at a bar and somebody talks crap about pro wrestling. You know, I, I, you know, I bounced for a number of years and one of the techniques that I loved when in, in bouncing was just the old quick snap down and front cross face. And that's, and that's the way you protect it in the bar and just crank and walk the guy right out, you know, and dump him. And that's the way that professional wrestling should be protected. And, uh, it, 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 number one, people laugh at it because the guys aren't tough anymore and they don't protect it. And then number two, it's not even fun entertainment. You know, it's politically correct. I mean, I, I don't know if have you seen uh, Jim, the Anvil Neidhart's daughter, not the one that's in WWE, but Jenny Neidhart. I actually never met her. I I've talked to her on Instagram. Uh, a few times because I worked some shows with her dad in Connecticut. Uh, he was he was up in the Indies in Connecticut a lot in the '90s, early 2000s, and um, she is so incredibly enticing, sexy, gorgeous woman, and she knows it. She knows how to flaunt it. She knows how to tease, and she's got a YouTube channel you can check out with her, you know with her sister. I think what they ought to do is give her a show where she's sitting down on the couch, real sexy, real suggestive, more adult type content stuff, and have her interview the wrestlers. They need to do stuff like that because it's just it, – it, it's sad that – They that won't do it because they're a public company. That's they're what public. Jerry Briscoe told me, but, I mean, you can – I mean, you could still make it entertaining, right? I mean, it, you you could still make it se sexually suggestive. I think the best thing that could happen is something new pops up because they're not going to change. I don't think yeah. there's there. But something yeah. that did what you say is entertaining but realistic and has actual tough people that you wouldn't want to mess with. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Hannibal, when I started in pro wrestling, uh, was at the tail end of college, I was um, going to a judo dojo in uh, Connecticut, Danbury, Akari, and my buddy uh, that had wrestled for New Fairfield was already doing pro wrestling. And he, um, he got me out in as his opponent. And I've always done that ever since. I mean, I brought, I brought some stud wrestlers in as my opponents. Uh, Jeff Lewis Neal's uh, teammate from Anderson College and roommate Steve Volponi I used to bring in to APW and Spartanburg and, and uh, Southern Championship Wrestling in Lawrence. And we used to go out there and we used to wrestle and make it. And, and people love that. People love to see wrestling. People love to see it to be somewhat competitive. I mean, one of the things that spots I would tell Steve, because he's a smaller guy than me, is, is when I'm coming up, hit me in a front headlock and try to hold me there as long as you can. You know, move your hips back, move your hips. And, he, and, and although he was a lot smaller than me, he was a stud. And it took me a long time to take him down sometimes. But that's real wrestling in a wrestling match. You know, as opposed to... Uh, the unrealistic, you know, acrobatic nonsense. And then on top of that, it not being fun and entertaining. So back to what you said with legends and vixens, we wanted to kind of create something of what we thought wrestling should go back to and make it fun and make it entertaining. Jim Ross even commented this week. I read it in the observer. He made a public uh, comment on his podcast that he's sick of seeing baby faces and heels standing around in a group waiting for these people oh, to perform their stunts when these stunts never even lead to a pin. So why do they keep doing it if, like, those aren't finishing moves? Once you learn that you're not going to finish someone, 
Maybe you should exactly. use something else. But they all look like a bunch of idiots standing out there like that. Oh, it's so stupid. Awesome. Yeah, it's it's predictable. It's stupid. And they're standing there, like you said, they're waiting. They're just waiting for the guy to come over so they can catch him. It's so dumb. And, you know, with the, the, the way it should be in a heel babyface wrestling match is you show that both guys can wrestle, but the heel can't out wrestle the baby face. So he has to cheat. That's the way, that's the way you get heat. That's the way the matches are supposed to be. Now that's the way Billy Wicks taught me how it's supposed to, you're supposed to work. It's a simple formula and you have to, and you have to have guys that can at least, that can at least wrestle, you know, that can at least basically wrestle. If you're going to call it wrestling, you know, like you say on the marquee, on the marquee, it says wrestling. And you also have to have guys that are characters, you know, you and, and guys that that look intimidating, you know, and have some size. I mean, some of these guys in the indie shows that I used to laugh at seem like those are the same guys that are on TV now. Right. And then they're pushing the one guy that actually maybe has a bit of size like this, this Lars Sullivan. They're pushing someone you can't even take seriously because if you search his name, you find out he was a gay porn gay star. Porn so star. I, heard that. Yeah. This. I thought like I used to see all these things because I don't re- re- really following it. And I used to see all these stories about that guy. And I thought it was one of those parody websites because it would always be these outlandish stories. And then the last one I saw was that he was a gay porn star. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I mean, you wouldn't hear that about the Giants. Yeah. What is uh, what is the NWA like? We talked about um, how Jim Cornette had left there. I watched that a little bit before Cornette left. Are they doing anything good over there? The status is I don't think they've run for almost a year because of COVID. I guess. They did do some combined. They lent UWN, United Wrestling Network, which is another company, some of their talent for some of those pay-per-views earlier this year. However, unfortunately, COVID killed that now too. So right now, I guess UWN is letting NWA use some of the footage from UWN and reposting it as NWA branded footage because it featured their talent. Yeah. Now is, is Billy Corgan, is Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins still running that or owning that? Yes. Yeah. Cause I mean, he's got a, he's got a fortune. So I kind of like the idea of going back and doing the old studio shows now um, to double back on something. Yeah. The double back on something related to that is the reason why um, Rick Bassman has all this heat because he wanted to fight Jim Cornette. Cause I talked to Rick about that. Yeah. Yes. Because Jim Cornette. Is- yes. Because I don't think people like Jim Cornette. Yeah. The, the issue is that, um, well, no, there's, a, there's a few reasons. They actually were on Rick's side over the Cornette thing. But then he told two stories about near fights he says he had with uh, Paul Orndorff and Ultimate Warrior. And people don't believe him. Oh, really? Did he so Did he, he actually have scraps with those guys? No. He had an argument with, uh, with Paul Orndorff, and he wanted to fight the Ultimate Warrior, but Warrior wouldn't fight. But he trained Ultimate Warrior – and Rick admits he always had big guys with him. If you've ever seen pictures with him, he always has big jacked up guys with him. So probably part of the reason these people didn't want to fight him was because of his backup. Yeah. <laughs> but I believe course, that yeah. the stories are true, but like people don't, and they might not believe every word of his story. That's his version of it. Uh, he admits that Paul Orndorff could have kicked his ass. But he thinks he could have beat the ultimate warrior, which we all know it's not always the size of the dog in the fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you never know with anything unless it happens. And and some of the stories, like you know, 
one of the things is, and you know this, and when you're when you're in the room and guys are 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 rolling or sparring or wrestling, um, size obviously matters big time. But at the same time, you know, like they always say, you know, the the, the Hummer or or the uh, what do they used to call that? The big foot. They used to use the analogy: the big foot can always roll right over the little car unless the big foot runs out of gas. Yeah. You know, so you never, you never know. I mean, I don't know how, um, but I hadn't heard those are those stories, but I talked to Rick Bassman um, about a month ago about booking um, Phil Baroni for a pro wrestling promotion that he's doing down in, uh, out in California. Is, yeah, that's is UWN. That's UWN that we were just talking about. Yeah. He's the CEO of U- UWN, Rick is. Yeah, because he was he was wanting to do a an MMA angle um, with that promotion, you know, out there. I liked um, Rick's idea of having a fight against Jim Cornette, and and I and I jumped right on that, and I wanted to offer to to corner and coach Cornette because I thought we could do some hilarious video, you know, get some because I don't think Cornette's ever done anything athletic in his life. <laughs> He fell from that uh, skyscraper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The road <laughs> warriors, yeah. He blew out his knees, I think. So, yeah, yeah, that's the most athletic thing I've seen him do. Yeah, because I asked him, one of the first questions that Brony and I asked him, we said, we said, are you a tennis player? Because uh, he carries that racket. He said, oh, no, I've never played tennis. I've never really done any anything athletic. I think he was the one who said that he never did anything he's athletic. A tennis player. Yeah, he just randomly carries a racket. That's interesting. You may have given us a scoop there. Yeah. Who knows what he's doing with that racket with all that's going on, you know, uh, with his private life, you know. Oh, God. Now, <laughs> the big talk um, this week, and speaking of good heel promos, Jake Paul did a great heel promo yeah. McGregor and Dana White and Dana White saying there's no way that's going to happen at this time uh, maybe in the future but when McGregor's under contract to him it's not going to happen do you think that fight should happen because Jake Paul has a point a lot more people know who Jake Paul is than this guy Poirier that Connor's fighting next month and it Absolutely. would be a good fight Absolutely. Jake Paul is awesome. He's the best heel in combat sports now. I mean, he is phenomenal. And God, his brother's got to fight with Mayweather now. Yeah. Big money. Yeah, big money fight. So yeah, he, he's he's doing it. He's doing it right. And one thing that uh I was kind of giggling about was uh Dana White mentioned this this um female Brazilian fighter. Oh, Amanda um, Nunes. That, that yeah, I mean, we got to, you know, got to get realistic, you know, uh, the differences between men and women and also the size differences. She, she's only like 135 pounds. I would take her over CM Punk, though. 100%, yeah, she might be. She might be not Jake Paul. <laughs> I could never, and I said this, I remember back when, when Phil and I were on your show, I said this, and me and Phil both said it, I could never understand the fascination with, with him. Like I never understood why he got over, I guess got over big time and, in, in, in uh, pro wrestling. Well, he didn't get over big time because he didn't really move numbers, but he was, he was pushed to the moon. He certainly got over with the office. Yeah. Yeah. I could never get him because I never thought he did any entertaining promos um, I was, I mean, obviously he, he's, he's not a, a real fight. He's not a fighter, um, but I could never get why he was so, I, I guess, I guess I thought so popular, but you're right. I mean, he was, he was probably just pushed by the office. Who knows? There, there's a video on my channel of back when CM Punk was champion. I went to a WWE event to make a, the Hannibal TV video. And they had me thrown off the property because I was showing that there was like no fans at the event. Oh, <laughs> it was practically dead. And that's when he was champion. And 
that just shows me that, that he wasn't really a draw. I don't remember that being a boom period in wrestling, like when Hogan was. And his backstage show was canceled after six months this year. So I think he hurt. People say, oh, it's wrestling. It doesn't matter. He got his ass kicked twice in MMA. People, you got to have some suspension of disbelief. Definitely. It, it absolutely. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something. People don't. People look at things from their own. Like these. These. They used to call them the smart, 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 smart marks or whatever. But here's the thing. It's not like that down here, man. In the South and in the rural South, like APW, the SCW, that Double Cross Wrestling out there in in, uh, in the way out in the sticks. Uh, the people, they believe, man. They they buy into it big time, and uh, and that's why you can get real heat there. That you can't. When I think I think professional wrestling has been ruined by all these these sophisticated fans that are trying to figure out how the show should be run, and they don't just kick back and relax. And I've got my own ideas on how to change that. Uh, and I think what we ought to do is we ought to go back and do the old Carney thing. I was talking to Big Kenny about that to my buddy Kenny Lester because um, he's he he said the same thing. We ought to call these fans in the ring and stretch them. <laughs> well, the other problem is that the companies are catering to those smart marks instead of the mainstream audience, and those smart marks are going to watch no matter what. They're obsessed fans, that they're hardcore, but rather than cater to like an, a bigger audience, they want to please the audience they already have. So I think that's more of a problem than the smart marks themselves, because and I'm a smart mark too. I can't really say I'm not, even though I don't watch the Yeah, but you're a wrestler. You're, you're a pro wrestler and a promoter. You're not, I'm talking about the fans that are that way. I mean, it, you know, they're catering to that that small group. And this is the thing, like, this is what we said. This is what I said when, when I was in, same thing. When I was in marketing with, with Bellator, same exact thing. Those people are always going to watch. A lot of those people, they have nothing else in their life. They're always going to watch. They're going to watch because they love to complain about it. So you don't worry about those people. And you everything you do is done, like you talked about Jake Paul, Everything you do should be done to expand your audience. You know, those people, you already have them in the palm of your hand. They're not going anywhere because a lot of those, a lot of those fans, those, those hardcore fans, you know, in, in MMA, call them hardcore fans. Those hardcore fans, they live, sleep, eat, and breathe watching this stuff. So you're not going to lose them. You know, that's, um, and I, and I think that the, the ratings show that pro wrestling's lost sight of that. Yeah, the all-time lowest raw rating was this week, lower than the days when Jim Cornette was one of the bookers, <laughs> to remind yeah. people of that, when there was Who and all these crappy characters. Oh, God, yeah. The plumber. I think they had Jim Neidhart playing the role of, of Who and T.L. Hopper and Freddie oh, Jones God. and all those guys. Those were bad. Yeah, days. the garbage man. <laughs> yeah, he was on the original Raw. So Raw now is worse than those days. Isn't it funny with, with uh, Cornette how this guy tries to talk about, he loves shooters and he tries to talk about serious wrestling. When he was the biggest goofball, like on, on screen and character, mm. I mean, he – he wasn't a serious wrestling guy when he was doing it. And then you talk about like when he was, when he was booking, um, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, he should go back and watch some of his, his own stuff. He was also in beyond the mat, which was the first big expose on wrestling. And then he complains about people that expose it. Well, that was one of the biggest ones. I think it came out. Oh yeah. Times, yeah. It's funny. I mean, uh, and and there's there's a there's a weird there's a weird stigma now like with pro wrestling and 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 the pro wrestling people the the that are the workers now the pro wrestlers themselves and the fans it, it is weird politically correct the 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 PC 
people have all gravitated towards it, which is professional wrestling should supposed to suspend reality. It should be the furthest thing from PC. It's supposed to be an escape. And that's why I was disappointed when earlier this year, I heard the report of like, maybe it was even last year, but whenever Sammy uh, Zayn had that guy thrown out of the building for calling him a name, it's like, what the hell, right? Your fans are supposed to be able to yell whatever they want. It's supposed to just be a release. The wrestlers should not be get offended by what the I'll fans you, are saying. I'll tell you, Hannibal, I loved your interview that you did with old Ken Patera. Oh, um, God. He's very <laughs> he's, unspoken. <laughs> yeah, he I met him his feelings hurt. at the bar. Yeah, he would not get his feelings hurt by a fan. I guarantee you that. No, I I met him at the uh, at the bar, and he was uh, in Charlotte way back when I was doing the the Charlotte Fan Fest with with Dan Severn, and he, we and he was uh, I had come from the pool area, and it came in with uh, Karen uh, McDaniel, who was uh, Wahoo's one of Wahoo's wives, ex wives, and um, she and, and we walked in from the bar, and he was he was cursing like a sailor. Ken, oh, Ken Patera sitting at the bar. And I remember just having a couple beers with him, and it took me a while to know who he was. She told Karen uh, McDaniel actually told me who he was because I didn't recognize him because he looks a little different now. But I loved when you did the interview with him, and he was talking about how overly sensitive everybody is today. And, you know, it's funny because and, and, it, do you know, do you know Les Thatcher? Not personally, but I have done a training seminar with him many, many Yeah, so Les Thatcher was really good friends with uh, Billy Wicks. And I um, I had lunch with Les Thatcher and his wife and Phil Baroni at me. And we got into this discussion about how, and this was probably 2015, so it was like five years ago. We got into a discussion how, insanely politically correct the world had come it was right after the hogan thing even as late as as the late 90s i got a chance to open up at tuxedo junks for john valby um the uh he does his christmas special and i told some icebreakers and introduced him on stage you know in the big ring announcer voice and he does um uh, the the offensive christmas carols and he picks on every single group and if he doesn't pick on your group a lot of people, groups, if they don't pick on them, they'll ask to be. So I think we've, I think we've really, I mean, watered down our society and, and it's, it's becoming, it's becoming a bunch of wussies, you know, like the whole cornet thing. Well, things are much more uh, strict in Canada, even than in the U S. So oh, yeah. I've always been brought up in the more uh, politically correct environment, but there's someone else you wanted to talk about today before we have to end this. And that is Dan, the B Severin, who I once defeated in wrestling. Yes. And I've done I remember many that. interviews <laughs> with him. I um, remember that there were two things that I wanted to, um, there were two things I wanted to mention. One was, and just yesterday, I did a, uh, a long call with Dan Severn and also with Pat Militich, and it was about two different things. And starting with Dan Severn, uh, I had hosted some uh, Feast with the Beasts with Dan, which are like where he tells stories. And usually it's on a night where there's a UFC show. And traditionally, we always did them at sports bars. And... What Dan wants me to start promoting now for him, and it's really cool, and it would be great for folks up there in Canada, because of all the restrictions on restaurants and bars, Dan wants to come to your home, wants to come to the home of, of fight fans, MMA fans, and pro wrestling fans, and host your Raw night or with your friends or host your UFC night. And backyard barbecues, once the weather gets better up there, whatever it is. And what I'm going to try to do is coordinate just like we do with, with seminars, uh, maybe tie in some wrestling seminars with it, maybe bundle a few together to make it worth his travel and just have a fun, entertaining night for you and your friends. And maybe you charge your friends a cover to come out there and meet and hang with the beast. 
Um, so at home feasts with the beast. Everybody's modifying things in uh, this crazy world in 2020. That's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, he is a very personable guy and a very down-to-earth guy. So I could actually see him successfully doing that and the fans really enjoying it. I wouldn't recommend that for all celebrities. It could be a disaster yeah. with some of the ones I've dealt with. Who's been the hardest uh, celebrity you've dealt with, by the way? You've dealt with a lot of them over the years. Oh, God. And, and, I, and I say it, there's... There's only one person that I ever had a problem with in pro wrestling or MMA. Uh, and it was, and it was a guy that a lot of people know because I had a little public back and forth feud with was Josh Barnett. And um, I don't have anything personally against Josh, um, but he had um, a time when I was doing a, a book with this, Eric was his coach and he's not with Eric anymore. They parted ways since, but Eric Paulson and I were working together on the book and I was tr living and training in California. And there was a guy who came in at that time who was a big time heavyweight judo guy. He was Japanese. And uh, he had a big issue with Josh. And um, I won't mention his name. He's a pretty well-known guy. And they got into it. And uh, I kind of sided with that guy at the time. And then when I was doing the book with Eric, we just expected that he would write one of the forwards. Cause I mentioned Gene LaBelle did a forward, Billy Wicks did a forward, not to rehash old things, but he wanted like six grand. And at the time his girlfriend was his manager. Um, and I know that they they haven't been together in a while. And then um, over the years I dealt with him and, and we always butted heads and then, um, the last time was with uh, Curran Jacobs when he won the world championships for the catch wrestling uh, tournament. He had a beef with Josh and then people can look online how I got in the middle of that. And uh, that was really the only guy that I ever had a problem with. But, I, you know, I always admire him. He's, he's a stud on the mat, man. I'll tell you, I've been in the room with him, but uh, personally never really got along with him at all. But I don't hate anybody. You know, I, I try to like everybody. And then. Um, the uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't think I've never really had anybody else that was that difficult to deal with. I mean, Phil Baroni, but we always joke about that, you know, because Phil and I are friends. There He's was that controversial stuff. podcast I did with you where you guys even had the fight on my podcast. I think it's oh, yeah, that's right. He fired me. Yeah, and I, <laughs> are you guys back together after that? I guess so. Okay. Yeah, it was like it was weird at that time because I had moved him into Matt Freeman's camp. If you remember, we had he had the I set him up with those wines out there. I talked to the guy that had the winery out there and he was living with Freeman. So I gave Phil was always difficult for me to deal with I, a great friend personally. But I gave Matt Freeman kind of the reins to do his bookings because he was he was always kind of a challenge. I mean, everybody. I mean, let's face it. You know, MMA guys and, and pro wrestlers, we're all a little nuts and we can all be difficult to deal with at times. I mean, I'm the least uh, offended guy, you know, if, if, if somebody if something goes wrong. I mean, the way I grew up with friends and family, you know, we could curse each other out and then hug, you know, so it's not um, that I get upset. But the guy that I really, really um, had heat with was Josh because he actually ended up um, having a whole ins issue with his girlfriend over um, over something to do with me that I won't get into that happened later, but it was, it was, it was, he hated me and he probably still hates me, but I'll tell you, Josh, if, if he ever hears this, I, I ain't gonna, I don't have any hate for you or anybody. I, I try to love everybody. Well, I'll pass that on to him. If I ever interview him now, we got, we got about three minutes left here before they shut us down. Where can people follow you? And is there anything you want to promote here? Yeah. Black oxygen. I want to talk about, about black oxygen because pat and i uh i just direct people to my facebook matthew j granahan and they can see the um the video that pat militich and i did yesterday on black oxygen this stuff is awesome i want to say that they don't claim to cure illnesses uh, but it, it gets energy into your cells man it's 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 phenomenal stuff Best thing to do, go to my Facebook page, follow me, Matthew J. Granahan, and then 
listen to the interview, man. Pat talks 90% of the, the interview and, and he, and he gives everybody the lowdown and the scoop um, on black oxygen. I guess we'll have to have Pat back on the Hannibal TV to talk about that because he wasn't promoting that last time I had it on. No, he, no, and, and, and I don't know how much time we have, but it, but it, it's personal for Pat. Black oxygen is personal for him. It gets oxygen in your cells because he and he and he talks about it in the interview yesterday in great depth about what happened to him when he was younger, having to sleep in sleeping in the basement and affecting his breathing, and how he became a world champion. And now he's taking this stuff. It was something that was originally just for the military fighting system guys, most dominant camp. They had all the belts at one point. Now he's taking it and he's offering it to everybody and it's, it's great stuff. Well, we got a little over a minute here. We were talking about Stefan Bonner earlier. The one guy that I asked at the whole cauliflower alley club a couple of years ago to back me up when I confronted Haku and barbarian was Bonner. And some people said, well, what the hell was he doing there? Well, if anyone could have my back against those two beasts, it would be him. Absolutely. And I did an interview on, I did a, a commentary on that about Haku and that uh, Kofi Kingston on your channel too. Yeah. Well, people should check that out. And this, uh, this channel here, if you go to the Zingo TV app or barn burner app, you can download it and watch this show every week. From oh, September. one quick plug, one real quick plug. I want to give, um, I want to plug uh, my girlfriend's music, uh, glory Differente. And they can look up G-L-O-R-Y, D-I-F-E-R-E-N-T-E. They can look her up online uh, more for the Latino community because it's all in Spanish. But she was a huge star in Venezuela before the coup. And she also sings opera. I'm going to send you as a little Christmas present her Ave Maria that we recorded for my mom. Um, it made, my, made my, my Sicilian mother tear up and cry. My mother has never, ever liked any woman I've dated before. But she loves absolutely loves um glory because uh she is the epitome of a traditional woman south american women i'm not a big fan of a lot of these american women today well we might get cut off by the time you answer this but how many girls have you been with speaking of all the, all the oh women? man i i'm gonna i'm gonna say half of what flair claimed and i'm gonna say I'm gonna snap. Nah, I'm gonna say three thousand, but only because I always take quality over quantity. Oh my gosh! Well, those would be pretty good numbers. That's that's quite an average. You started young, then I guess. Well, I started young with a girl named Christy that looked a lot like uh, Meryl Monroe, or uh, she she was a bigger Marilyn Monroe. She kind of looked more like James Mansfield. She I always. I like the I like the girls with little meat on the little meat on the bone, and uh, I know this is a PG show, but as I I've always kind of had like a C cup minimum. Interesting. Well, the current girl that you're with uh, is definitely uh, up to your regular standards. Very uh, oh yeah, physique on her. And keep, speaking of your Matthew J. Granahan Facebook. I mean, I'm on Facebook too, Devin Nicholson, Devin Hannibal Nicholson, and I see a lot of those pictures. I like the one where you have the towel with the the giant, I think I can say, the giant dick picture on the towel. Yes. So it looks like yes. you're walking around with that. What is people's reactions when they see you wearing that? Well, usually I break that out in Vegas and people love it. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.